Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. If you're new to my channel, where have you been? Take a little look at my back catalogue, you might enjoy seeing some of my uh, videos. If you are a supporter of my channel, thank you for coming back and hanging out with me. I know that time's precious. Today's video is about 3D flower and how I've created my own floating 3D flower. Uh, it's got two, three layers in there. And I think I've balanced the delicateness of it. It might be a bit too transparent for some people, but I love that back area and that colour cottage pigment sparkling. And the inks I've used are, it's not really ink, it's Casting Craft Red, white and yellow. And there's a big diamond in the middle, crystal should I say, and some glitter. And around the edge, that was done with Arteza paint, sprinkling on the glitter and then UV resin around it. So... Um, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more, but thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Uh, visit my Facebook group if you want to showcase your art and help inspire other people. Hopefully we'll inspire you. Uh, visit my Etsy, Redbubble and Facebook store if you want to purchase any of my work. There might be some treasures there that you enjoy. So if you don't want to hear me waffle, skip right to the art. I'll put the time that that is there for you to jump forward to. If you don't mind the waffling, I'll tell you a little bit of this journey and try and keep it short and sweet. This was not without some challenges. Uh, apologies, some of the challenges were not caught on camera because I had to um, act pretty quickly on some of them, which meant that I couldn't get my camera set up. But ultimately, I did my bottom layer, red, loved. Did my yellow and white layer, loved. At the very last stage of doming, I talk in my video about saying, ooh, I'm undecided if I'm going to put a tiny little bit of red just around where the centrepiece is. And I decided to do it. I thought I'd got my windowsill level. I only applied the tiniest little bit. But when I came back an hour to check on its progressing, it had seeped all uh, to one side. So what I did was got my heat gun and decided to melt the top film that had started to cure. I got a lollipop skip and I pulled it out. So it was like skin, like a dry skin. The rest of it was still sort of fluidy underneath, but then I had to let it cure. The only thing is there's a little bit left there that I decided to leave that there because it's sort of going, add into the look of the center and no leaves are perfect or petals. They're all, they're all separate, but overall I managed to save this piece and, I, and I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so then I knew it wasn't going to cure correctly, so I had to come in and dome again uh, over the top to remove that. And I added a little bit more glitter there. So you see on the first part of the video, I'm building the details. See the dark bits under there around the centre? That's where I was building up that effect there. Uh, for my next one, I'd flip it around so that the centrepiece is at the front and not the back, because that was something that um, I was aware of. It left a little uh, point out of there so it's become quite a big so this one isn't designed to be a coaster i've got a mini easel so that would be like a little piece of separate small art um i would use thinner uh crystals in the middle next time but i just didn't want it to be glitter love the color cottage super sparkle white in the back of that and i love the wispiness some people may not like the wispiness of this flower and they might want it more solid uh, around the edges there, I added Arteza paint. I sprinkled my Arteza gold glitter and then I painted UV resin on around it with my uh, UV lamp and, and dried that just to control that. The edging itself is not domed perfectly. I think that's because I had to add an extra layer to compensate for when I would um, had to burn that top layer off or melt that top layer off. But overall love i love the effect of this for myself i didn't want mine to look like the ones that people do when the piping that all comes down to a personal choice how you want them to look i wanted mine to look organic floaty and yeah organic i think that's the word now i've worked with casting craft quite a while because i use that in my ocean so i know how to control it or um get the the feel out of it you might not want that so you don't need these piping bags in my opinion if you're using casting craft what everybody else says they do i think it's 
more complicated and when they're saying you need just two drops of casting craft it's very forgiving it's expensive but it's forgiving but the thicker you, it is the more control you have but there is a balance with that so i just give one squirt i don't count the one top drop or two drops i don't do this piping what i do do is pour my resin into my mold so that you're not got big chunks of resin in your container sitting around because it'll just rapidly heat up and go like concrete pretty quick within your jug so it's important you never keep your resin just stood around so put it into your molds your air bubbles can come to the top you can use your gun to get rid of any excess um, air bubbles let it sit i then waited until about 15 minutes uh, with my casting craft and i dipped my casting craft in um, a lollipop in it a thin one so it's like a paintbrush and i pierced my resin halfway and then i just sculpted my petals delicately and i only wanted one row of petals you saw me go around it twice that was just because i was seeing how it was responding but i did my base layer and then i came back and did a second layer of my yellow and white and i'm glad i did that because when i added my third layer which was the red i was able to scrape it off without losing the whole piece so that's another tip for you but uh casting craft if you wait until it's nearly curing you're going to have more control of it so dip it in draw your petals apply a bit of heat don't go too much you basically just want to go over the top of it um, with a lower heat and speed come back on it with a higher heat and just push it once in the different directions you work with it you'll see but i feel that that gives you more control than this pipe in bag that you get but again many artists out there are uh, really great at this they show you their version of it i would just say work with the products get used to the products see how they respond to you and put your own spin on you just be mindful if you are going to do lots of these use the correct heat resistant resin otherwise the minute you put a cup on there if you're going to use this as coaters you're going to leave a stain but something else to take into consideration if you're going to be doing a lot of coasters where you're just seeing clear resin be mindful it will discolor over years now depending on what brand you're using is whether you get six months two years three years but all resin will yellow over time especially if it's going to be exposed to heat or sunlight when you have pigments in it it reduces the look of that um but i think it's just something for us to put out there into the art community especially if you're new to resin and you're going to start doing lots of these kind of things i'd hate for you to I'd hate for you to be disappointed in um, 12 months, two years, however long it takes, and you see that these are slightly discoloured where it's clear and the more, plas more plastic, the more resin you have in a concentrated area like that, the more discoloured it could go. But again, do your research, look at the manufacturer's instructions, but my recommendation is create a piece of art and let it stand for 12 months. I know that could be frustrating. You might want to go into production straight away. But the most valuable lesson I've got is create a prototype like this. I'm going to pop it on my windowsill the same way I would want to sell it to somebody or anything like that. And then I'll come back in 12 months time to actually see what happens to it. Anyway, that's a lot of information put your way. By no means am I trying to put you off these. I think they're beautiful. I think that they can add so much value and i think they're great gifts and i think you could sell them but if you're new to resin i just want to put that out there into the art community something for you to take into consideration so that's my first prototype very happy some learns for myself i would do a few things differently i would definitely encourage you to do multiple layers i know that some people can get the effect in one one um layer but just look at the depth you can get in there and I think I've got an angelic little piece, but I'd love your opinion anyway. Uh, have you applied your flower if you've done them already in the way I did? Uh, if not, and you don't do the piping, how do you do it? I'd love for you to share it with the art community. Anyway, that's a lot of me digressing. I do not ask for forgiveness for that. That's about me sharing my knowledge with you and wisdom on this. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. There's not much talking through the video. That's why I've done it all now. And I hope you enjoy the close-up that you get at the end.
Okay, I am just having a look at this. So this is set. My stone moved a little bit, but it's um, still in there. So what I'm gonna do now is embellish the middle with some UV um, resin, which I've got my little lamp there. I'm gonna put glitter and try and keep it directly at that point. And I've got like a, it's, it's a very organic flower, but I quite like it. I can't see what it's gonna look like underneath because I'm gonna now come in with another layer. And my initial thoughts are come in with a little bit of orange, or should I say yellow, and then a little bit of white. But I think I'm just going to come in with a little bit of white, just around here, um, and then we'll see how it is, because I can't wait to see. I mean, considering it was my first attempt, and I did it freehand, I'm not into all this piping of the bag at the minute, uh, just experimenting this way and seeing how it responds. So, yeah, I quite like um, the feeling of it. It's almost like a poinsettia, kind of, <laughs> in my eyes. Anyway, I will UV it. You'll see me put it over here, put a bit of glitter. Then I'll come in with some normal resin and add a little bit of white and see if that's going to add value. Stick with it.
All right, we are back. But before I go into that, I just demolded this with the um, alcohol ink with the leftover resin. And oh my God, that is just divine. I, I don't even know if you're going to get to see the beauty and the shimmer on that. I think I'm going to be using more of this colour in alcohol inks. It makes it look like it's a, a proper jewel. I'm trying to get that good reflection for you. Anyway. <laughs> So getting distracted we are here to do the doming on this so if i go down there it's flat and um it's a good job with doming because there's a little bit of dust in there and where the resins come to the top because i kept looking at seeing how it was moving but the top coat will do that so i've only mixed up 60 mils so it's a one to two ratio so 20 mils of the hardener 40 mils of the resin and I'm working on my windowsill. <laughs> One, because I can see the light better for these dust particles, because I really do love this stage here. And I'm contemplating coming in with just a tiny little bit of red around the inside. But I don't want to push it, and I don't want to ruin it. But if you look down here, it needs doming. So I'm hoping I'm going to have some more left so I can make another little gem like this. And I've got my vase drying here. I've got stuff drying everywhere. But Basically, I've got some big projects coming on, my Golden Beach, and I needed the space, so the windowsill's probably going to be the best place for me to see light, and I've got this ready to put a board over the top to protect it, and we're good to go. So you're going to see me dome it, and at the last minute, I might add some red. I might not. Let's see how we feel. Anyway, I've made sure it's level. Final stages, fingers crossed, because I love this flower. All right, with leftover resin, I'm gonna add grape to this one because I really love the purple, but oh, should I stick to that? No, I'm gonna go grape because I wanna try different colors. I'm just gonna keep it quite loosey-goosey. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. And then if I feel I wanna add some at the top like I did with the other one, I will. Sorry that you're getting trying to think of the most natural colours for Jim. Mm -hmm. 